Uh, look, um, this whole linear time thing, it's, uh, it's quite the mindfuck. Welcome to Fishing the Thought Bait, a mindfulness podcast where we help people explode into their lives through full impact mindfulness. We're not looking to help people find themselves. We're looking to help people create themselves. No matter whether you got here by accident or on purpose or whether you were kidnapped, here we are. Welcome aboard. The only requirement for admission to this place is the honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness to try. And if you have a few pixie dust sprinkles of each one of those, you're on your way. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist. And as always, we're joined by an eclectic roster of guests. And tonight we have, I think, what uh, will prove to be quite a energetic and invigorating conversation. Uh, welcome, Craig Goldberg, to Wolf Fishing Without Bait. Thank you, Jim. Honored to be here. Big fan. Thank you for having me. Well, that's uh, that's very kind words. So, uh, Craig, you're advertised as a relaxation expert and technologist. Could you expand on that a bit more? Absolutely. I um, I've been stressed and anxious for a long time, and I didn't realize quite how much we here at In Harmony focus on helping people relax until. Uh, somebody came on the team and we were talking about uh, our podcast promo and how we present me to to the world. And after a few minutes of looking down, Rachel looked up and she looked at me and she went, you're a relaxation expert. I've been listening to you talk and and all you're talking about is how to relax and teaching people how to relax. And, and we weren't using the word relax as part of anything that we were doing. And she tied and drew that line and and it just hit. It resonated. I was like, I think that's true. And inevitably, we began having conversations then about anxiety and depression and and how I've always been a go, go, go kind of guy and, and how many others around us and in our ecosystem are in that go, go, go mode, achieving, um, digging themselves out of a hole, whatever it might be. There's, there's all sorts of different reasons why you need to be in go mode. But uh, it was one of the first kind of realizations of what we really do here at In Harmony is we teach people how to relax using sound and vibration. And then we started to dig in on the nervous system and we started to dig in what's actually happening when you're mindful. There are so many different aspects of the topics that you cover that resonate with me deeply. I am, uh, I'm excited for this conversation. And the technologist part, I love technology. I'm a big fan of technology. I've got gadgets and gizmos until the... <laughs> You know, you, you name it, it's here. And you put the two of them together and you start to get into tech-assisted uh, tech assisted meditation. You start to get into topics of how we can leverage technology to help ourselves relax. And when you understand the physiology of the body and you understand what's happening day to day, we can use technology to influence that. And we can reach those same states without technology as well. There are a lot of different ways that you can get to that same endpoint, and I want to talk about them all. Well, what we often talk about, there's many roads to Pittsburgh, but they all lead to Pittsburgh. They uh, do. <laughs> so when you ask uh, the person on the street what's the most common presentation that people bring to therapy, they would say depression. It, Craig gets anxiety by far. Uh, what I try to impress upon people, we live in an individualistic society that believes that their self, self will can conquer any problem. And I try to explain to them about the myth of productivity in this country. What uh, mm. can you explain on that? Absolutely. I mean, look, we wear busyness as a badge of honor, it is absolutely crippling this country and the individuals that make it up. Uh, you ask somebody, hey, how are you? And I would say five out of 10 times, you're going to get the reply, busy. How you doing? I'm busy. Got a lot going on. They wear it like a badge of honor. And our downtime is as important as our uptime. And in that go, go, go mode, when you are just trying that high output of productivity, you need to give the body rest, whether that's a good night's sleep, a nap in the middle of the day, meditation, mindfulness practice of some kind. You got, you can't, I can't sit at this desk all day long. I have to get up, walk around, move my body, 
got a rebounder I could jump up and down on. I'll go for a walk outside. I'll put my feet in the pool or get my feet in the grass underneath the tree out back. You have to give yourself a break. We can really only focus for a set period of time. And that busyness is quite literally running ourselves into the ground. Now, there's a time and a place for everything. These bodies are incredibly resilient. We can do anything for a short period of time or even in some cases a long period of time. But ultimately, we need to get good or get better at giving ourselves a break and not always being in go mode. That's what that's what that means to me. Well, I always try to explain to people, and I do speak at a lot of rehabs, and I tell them that of all the substances on earth that people abuse, Craig, time is the worst one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, we're all... We're all in recovery from something, I think, is something that you just said. And and I think that's paired with we're all addicted to something. And it doesn't have to be drugs or alcohol. It doesn't have to be porn. Uh, there are lots of different things that we can get addicted to as habitual beings and pattern recognition beings. We are used to and, a, and, a, and um, uh, we're, we're used to doing the same thing over and over again and getting into these patterns that feel comfortable, even though they might be detrimental to our health. So one of the things that a therapist does is try to point out blind spots to people. And generally, when we talk about relaxation or doing nothing, that seems like an anthem. It's, it, it seems like, what are you doing? Well, in a moment, I'm doing nothing. It seems like, well, then, then you're worthless. Then you're wasting your time. What do you have to say to people who say that to you? You know, even as you're saying that, all right, so here's what's going through my mind. When I actually sit down for just a couple moments to either catch my breath or literally just to sit and space out or or I'm thinking about something and my wife will come over and be like, well, what are you, what are you doing? And I'll be like, <laughs> nothing. And she'll be like, hey, can you do me a favor? And and I'm like, no, I'm sitting here doing nothing. Like, right? And And really, it's, and my wife is go, go, go as well. And we're going to talk about her and her journey as well. But um, I immediately thought about that. Um, your downtime is as important as your uptime. As I said, you got to give your body time to rest. Now, just sitting there doing nothing might not be your rest. And it might not be a rest that actually gives you rest or a, uh, an, um, uh, an activity that actually gives you rest. I'll tell you, there are things that I absolutely love doing around the house that bring me great joy. One is vacuuming and the other is doing dishes. And I'll tell you why. I also love helping people move and I love picking and dropping people up off at the airport, but that's a different conversation. When I'm vacuuming or doing the dishes, nobody can bother me. I'm not on my phone. I'm not on my device. I might have a podcast or something running in the background or a book that I'm listening to. But generally speaking, when I'm vacuuming, I can't be on a phone call and nobody can really ask me questions because the vacuum's running and I'm clearly in the middle of something. So it's not like my dog can ask me anything or my wife can ask me anything. It's just my time to sit and focus. And it is a form of meditation for me. It is a place where I get deep thought and often have epiphanies. Uh, and then, of course, using my relaxation furniture and my sound table technology helps me greatly to reach the depth of my own psyche, my own emotions, my own mental capacity so that I can relax and have these downloads or breakthroughs that help me to be a better human, be a better father, be a better husband, be a better friend, be a better business partner. So I I know for myself that sitting down and doing nothing, as, as a, even though I started and opened, I don't get to do that very often because every time I do, my wife asks me to do something, <laughs> bless her beautiful heart. So I find myself getting busy to rest and obviously being on the sound lounge and, and on relaxation furniture that we produce is is one way to do that. And you certainly can't bother me while I'm on it. Headphones, I'm laying down in a bed. Um, but uh, there's a lot of different ways to find your downtime. And I think it's really important for all of us to have some process that helps us to rejuvenate. Well, we try to introduce the concept to people, Craig, that our brains are not hardwired to multitask. So we try to get them into the mode of doing something one thing mindfully at a time when yeah. you're when you're ironing or when you're whether you're vacuuming then i'm in vacuuming mode i'm in yeah. ironing clothes mode i'm in brushing teeth mode i'm in yeah. talking to gym mode i'm in doing nothing mode i i'm yeah. a big believer in modes absolutely um a singular focus um the brain processes a ton of information at one time 
the reticular activator system of the brain filters out most of it and feeds to us one, two, maybe three things, four things at a time that we can hold in our conscious mind. But we really are not good at multitaskers. My wife will tell you that she's great at multitasking. Yeah. And, and frankly, she's way better at it than I am. And at the same time, I am a singular focus, one thing at a time kind of guy. And if my wife or my daughter ask me to do something, I'm doing that myopically. Uh, to a fault where they'll actually ask me to do something else and I'll say, well, I, I could do one thing at a time. You just asked me to do this. I'm doing this. And and my wife, who does multiple things at once, I've watched her do it. It's it's magnificent. I just don't have the capacity for that, to your point. Instead, it's one thing at a time, diligently and with focus. And that helps me to make sure that I'm getting everything done and that I'm doing it well, efficiently, and I got to do it once and once alone. Well, what I tried when I introduce the concept of mindfulness to people. I tell them that it's not necessarily going over to Thailand and sitting on a satin pillow surrounded by 10,000 candles going mm, all day. It's that about, sounds nice though. <laughs> it's about paying attention on purpose. Yeah. Look, it's, a, it's about being intentional. It's, an, it's about an awareness that when you are go, 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 and you have all these stimuli that are flying at us. And believe you me, in this beautiful society that we've co-created, there's no shortage of stimuli. It's It gets noisy. Your brain is processing something like 4 billion inputs per second. 4 billion with a B. You can really handle four inputs at a time, which is what I just kind of talked about in my last uh, um, uh, kind of question that you had answered, that I, you had asked. We really do need to quiet the noise. We really do need to take time to sit and be quiet. There are things that come to you in meditation separate of my sound, you know, of our sound lounge and the meditation cushion and using sound and vibration. As you sit still, what's remarkable to me is what you shift in hearing and what you shift in your awareness of your surroundings. I'll give you a case in point. You sit in my living room. And, and you sit there quietly when there's nobody else in the house, all of a sudden I start to hear all sorts of machines, fans, compressors, my kitchen, all these things that I had quieted or zeroed out that, that were not important. And now all of a sudden they come into my awareness. And that's in the physical world. In my body, there's a point in time when I go to bed and I'm just closing my eyes and I can actually hear my heart pumping and blood flowing through my ears. I don't know if that ever happens to you. I've never actually talked about that. I don't know if it happens to anybody else. Sure it does. It's remarkable. It, it's always there. I would assume blood is always flowing through my ears, but all of a sudden that becomes the relative noise and stimuli and taking time to quiet the mind. By the way, it's not to silence your mind. The, the point of mindfulness is not to get your mind to stop thinking. Your mind doesn't know how to do anything different except think. It is instead to find peace among the noise, to allow those thoughts to flow through your mind, to allow your other senses to settle and relax and allow you to find this centered, balanced well-being with yourself, with your own thoughts, with your own being, with your own vibration, and just to be, to sit and relax and let the world pass by. Well, in Buddhist thought, uh, Craig, the beating of your heart is the most consistent timepiece that a human being has. Hmm. It's interesting. So that's what I often talk to people. I, I do a time traveling exercise with people. I usually suggest to them that we all have frequent flyer miles to the past and the future with brief layovers in the present. And this is when life is happening. So I'll yes. talk, talk to them about usually when we're in the past, we're living in resentment or frustration or sorrow or self-pity, thinking about things we wish we would have done or thinking about things we wish we would have not have done, thinking about things we wish we would have said, or thinking about things we wish we would not have said. And that past becomes a tar pit and we bring that pain of the past with us right into the present. And when we're living in the future, we're living in anxiety and we're living in worry and underlying all that is fear. Fear is the most fundamental emotion that human being people feel. So I suggest to them that we can turn that past into experience and wisdom, not only to help others, but to help ourselves also. And we turn that future into goals and ambitions. It's uh, Goals and ambitions are accomplished by action and effort in the present. 
So, and this is what this show's about. It's about a lifetime without definitive expectations because that's what mm. that's what foul people up and then i'll have them put their hands in the middle of their chest and i'll say what organ of your body are your hands near and they'll say my heart and i'll say is your heart beating in the past is it beating in the future when's the only time it can be beating right now it's always right now that's what i have on my arms i'm i'm right here it's right now i have to remind myself <laughs> Absolutely. There's a watch that you can buy and it's, uh, you know, it's an old school uh, with the shorthand, the long hand, and, and it just says now, 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 now. What time is it? It's now. I have that. I have that clock in my office. It's a phenomenal clock. It's a great reminder. Uh, look, um, this whole linear time thing, it's, uh, it's quite the mind fuck. Pardon my expression. Um, it's, we, we know, um, we know all the words. <laughs> I'm a New Yorker comes out every now and again. It's um it's quite the experience. I still struggle with it and I recognize and explore consciousness on a regular basis. I am very aware that linear time is is not a thing and yet I struggle with it. Um my daughter is a great reflection of that. She's 4. There is not there is not a thing in her world that's not happening right now doesn't care, doesn't want to talk about what's happening tomorrow, what's happening later. She did just start to put her clothes out for the following day. And she <laughs> likes that as an ex as an exercise. But inevitably, she'll wake up and be like, I don't want to wear that. I want to wear this. And pick something new out of her closet. But um, it's a beautiful reflection of living in the present moment. And um, I forget the exact quote, but it's something like, if you're thinking about the future, you're anxious. If you're living in the past, you're depressed. And the only time we're of sane mind is when we're in the present. And I I don't believe, I don't know how deep we can get here, but uh, this whole born and when I pass uh, being this linear time line, uh, I, I don't believe that that's the case. Instead, it's just a series of present moments stacked next to each other. And we need to remind ourselves of that. It's very easy for us to fall down a rabbit hole of what will be. I mean, look at what's happening in the world right now here in the United States as we, I won't talk specifics, but it was a really crazy weekend. Indeed. Wild things happened. Indeed. And and last weekend too, it was another crazy weekend of like things that I never thought I would see in my lifetime and I saw them. So it's very easy. Last night as I was doing the dishes, I was thinking about what will. And I'm a prepper and I like to plan. Again, I struggle with this whole linear time thing. And, and yet, I was really struggling with what's going to happen over the next five months, four months, whatever, hundred and some odd days. Um, this is a very scary time in a lot of ways, and it is a beautiful time in many, many, many other ways. And I struggle with thinking about the future quite often. I think a lot of people do. Um, my exercise and the way that I deal with it is to shift my thinking around my conscious thought of what I think will be and shift to my visualization of what I want it to be. And I have a very sturdy and strong visualization practice. It's not complicated, it's not difficult, but I do visualize my future in the present moment. Not in the future like I will or I'm going to, but as I am, and I, I am right now. I am, two most powerful words in the English language, because anything you put in front of them, you are which is why our website is IamInHarmony.com. But uh, I step into what I want to be as if it is happening right now, and I allow the emotions and the senses to be stimulated as if I am right now. And that helps me to manifest the future that I want versus the future that somebody else wants or that, that may unfold another way had I not been so dedicated to it. Well, on my left forearm, I have tattooed I am. And on my right forearm, I have the two most powerful words that a human being can have in their vocabulary, Craig, and it's I choose. Most people mm -hmm. live their lives on I have to, I need to, I must, I'd better. Those are self-defeating words. I I'll often suggest to people, if you understand and are willing to accept the consequences, then everything in your life's a choice. And when everything in your life's a choice, I tell them on that day, you'll be free. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's powerful. We'll be continuing our conversation with our delightful, insightful guests 
Craig Goldberg of IamInHarmony.com on our next podcast. And here's your free prescription, fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Unplug your television and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we fish without bait. Do a kindness for yourself and do a kindness for another. Forgive yourself and forgive another. Till all are free, namaste, my friends. Please check out our website at fishingwithoutbait.com, where you can listen to the show, comment on our discussions, and find out where you can subscribe to our podcast. If you're interested in flying the colors of Fishing Without Bait, click the shop icon on our website. We have clothing, mugs, cell phone cases, and so much more. Show the world that you fish without bait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.